Hello, 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 my people of God. Hello, hello, hello. I am so excited to be in front of your presence today, this morning, this afternoon, tonight, whatever you guys are viewing from. I'm just so happy. I'm always happy to come in front of you um, and always excited and waiting for the Lord to give me something to say to you guys. Amen. Because I know, you know, um, you know, it's very important that we stay in the word of God and, then, and that we stay in tune um, with God at all times. I'm talking about 24, 24-7. Uh, you know, 365 days uh, a year, you know, we should be always seeking God, um, trying to hear the voice of the Lord, just, just whatever God places in your spirit to do with him, we should always be with the Lord at all times. Amen. Amen. So today I, I want to talk about um, disaster, right? I want to talk about the topic is disaster will fall on us if we idolize anything but God. Amen. So, you know, um, the Bible says that we shouldn't um, commit idolatry. Amen. So um, anything, um, it, idolatry is anything that's not God, point blank. You know, so if you out there, if you worship another God, you worshiping people, things of the world, you know, then that puts you in a place and in trouble with the Lord. Amen. Because that's not what he created you to do. He created you to worship only him. Amen. Amen. So let's not get caught up in the sin of committing idolatry. Amen. I, mean, I know some of you guys out there are guilty of it. I am too. Let me tell you something. I did not realize, amen, that um, adultery could be as, as simple as you idolizing your car, <laughs> amen, or either loving your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your, you know, your children. I mean, even your kids that wanted to birth out, amen. I mean, you, I mean, you can get easily caught up um, when you're not um, mature enough in the spirit. Um, you know, you can easily get caught up, especially when you're lost and you're not with God. And you start to worship these things of the world. And, I, and I'm guilty of that. Amen. And and before I move into the word, um, because you know that we still read it in the book of Jeremiah. We're in, we're in Jeremiah 44 and the NIV version. Um, that's what I'm reading from. Amen. For those who just started um, tuning in. Um, but, you know, I'm going to share this blessing with with you guys. Now, I, I believe I may share it before, but I probably give you, you guys the Pacifics. Amen. So, you know, the Lord had blessing with a new vehicle here about a month ago. And I'm telling you what, I mean, I am so thankful for it because I knew it was coming. I didn't know when, but I knew it was coming because I had already spoken to me about a new vehicle um, since last year, but I just didn't know when, how, and who. Um, amen. Um, and like I tell you guys, God will meet you at your place of being wherever you at. God will meet you there. I don't care if your credit score jacked up. I don't care if you got no money. I mean, I don't care if you got no ride to the car lot. The Lord, um, once, the God, once the Lord ordained um, um, for, for your blessing to be released, there's nothing, nothing nobody can do about it. I mean, I'm telling you, things will just happen and work out for you in your favor. Amen. So anyway, um, what I want to share with so I got this car, beautiful car. Um, it's the first new car I ever had. Um, you keep it real. Amen. It's a 2017. Um, um, car, Amen. So I mean, I, I'm real proud of myself because it was it was it's a huge accomplishment accomplishment for me because I never had gotten a, a finance car by myself. I always got a car of my own, but not actually finance. Amen. So moving forward, fast forward. So I got the car, beautiful car. Um, I like the car; it's very nice. But when I got the car, I, I didn't feel nothing to about it. You know, I mean, I was grateful and thankful that the Lord had given me a car, but I didn't feel nothing for it towards it. And even till this day. A whole month later, it's the same thing. I look outside, or I get in my car to go to work, or what, uh, either my whereabouts, amen. And I, you know, and I'm still not feeling up to the car. So I felt real bad, and I thought I, I was being ungrateful because I wonder after two days, three days going into it, having a car, I still felt the same way. So then I started feeling embarrassed. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, Lord, what's wrong with me? Like, why am, am, am I not excited about the car? And He said, There's nothing wrong with you, Latoya. He said that you just don't worship. The car anymore the things of the world anymore you worship me amen so what god did was he took out the things that i used to like and he placed the the things that uh that that that, that he likes amen so um to, to make it more understandable the desires that i used to have god removed that now and, and um, now it's it's become his desire so the things that you know that i look at now is totally different i i am thankful for the car i'm grateful that the lord has blessed me uh, with a brand new car but i do not idolize my car i promise you i can go back and get my old car i don't do that the way man and still love the lord the same way amen i mean nothing will come before the lord i don't care how many matches he has set up me for me in heaven i mean i'm still gonna love the lord and put him first at all times and then when he said to me i'm like okay god 
I get it. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, my God. Like, that, that's great. That's awesome that I have came this far. I mean, because the old me, I'll be riding around, texting, calling everybody. Yeah, girl, I got to go now. Da, 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 you know, flies and whatever. But now nah, that just, it gets old, especially when you with God. Everything is new. And I'd rather be in with the new than the old. Amen. So that's a word for somebody. Amen. So um, let's go on to read um, the text um, from Jeremiah 44 and 8. Okay, amen, amen. Now, some of these uh, scriptures are going to be already, uh, God is going to be already talking, amen. And so I will try to co coerce what um, God is saying before the actual text that I'm going to read, amen. So let's go to 44 and 8, and it says, and I'm not going to read the top part of 8, I'm going to read the bottom part of 8, because that's what stood out to me in the spirit. And it says, you will destroy yourselves and make yourself a curse and and an object of reapproach re among all the nations on earth. So God is saying by us uh, worshiping and idolizing these idols other than him, we're going to create a curse on ourselves. We're, we're going to create a curse on our lives. Amen. And, you know, and, you know, I'm feeling like, you know, once that curse uh, has uh, has uh, become created, it passes on. Now, you heard a generation curse, right? It passes on to your children, their children, and, you know, and it, it just goes on to someone like myself and you can come along and who's going to really stand for God and break it. Amen. So we don't need to idolize and we don't need to break any type of commandment about idolizing um, 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 anything but God. Amen. Um, because what's going to happen is, is that, you know, we're going to create a curse on ourselves. God's going to put a curse on, on our lives. And we don't want that. Amen. Because here, during this time in this text, on this chapter 44, they was actually worshiping what they call Queen of Heaven. And Queen of Heaven was a goddess, a sky goddess. Amen. That a lot of people back then in the biblical times um, through the Middle East used to worship this uh, this Queen of Heaven. Amen. I, I don't know where they get a Queen of Heaven from, but that's what the Bible says. Amen. But I looked it up and I, and I realized that, they, that it was a sky goddess. And they used to worship the sky goddess um, in the sky. Um, and, and burn up office offerings and incense to her, which is crazy. But that's just how some people do. Even now, to nine days, don't even recognize Jesus Christ as being the Messiah. Amen. So it's just still to the same spirits just pass on from generation after generation that's still here on this earth today. And it's sad because they, they're going to miss God. Amen. So let's move forward. Now let's go to um um. So the first thing is the first thing is what the first thing is placing a curse upon our lives, right? And we worship. Uh, we worship. We idolize uh, another God, then it's, it's going to cause what a curse over our lives that cannot be broken. That's, that's what I'm hearing now. Like it's like it's so severe and serious to God because God was so heated with, with His people in chapter 44. Um, that it's like He's not even going to break the curse. Amen. And that that's all for people, God. Amen. So let's be mindful and careful about the things that we receive, um, and you know, and not get too attached to the things of the world. You know, even our children, like I say, people don't get too overly whelmed um and what's overly whelmed that mean overly loving them because we do serve a, a jealous god and whenever you commit your life to god god see listen the key is what did i just say whenever you commit your life to god that means everything's supposed to be see committed stands out everything is committed to him every spot on your body every spot inside of you every part of your being is committed to god amen so he, he owns everything inside of you on you everything so you should be committing yourself to god all right amen all right so then um 44 and 25 says and i read it for the niv version i apologize this is this is what the lord almighty the the god of israel says you and your wives have done what you said you would we would do when you promise uh we will certainly carry out the vows we made to turn incense I'm sorry. Let me start over here. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. You and your wives have done what you said. You would do when you, you would do when you promise. We will certainly carry out the vows we made to burn incense and pour out drink offerings to the queen of heaven. And God is saying to them, go ahead then. Do what you promise. Keep your vows. See here in 25, they are speaking to God. So they're telling God, we don't care about you. We're still going to burn our incense to these other gods. We're still going to burn our incense to uh, the queen of heaven. We're still going to pour our drink offers, uh, offers. Amen. So God is saying, okay, with your bad self, go ahead. Go then, you, go, then go ahead then. Do what you promise. Keep your vows. 
Then drop down to 26 where it says, um, but hear the, hear the word of the Lord. I swear, he said, I swear by my great name, says the Lord, that no one from Judah living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name or swear as surely as the sovereign Lord lives. So God is saying, you can no longer use my name. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, the God is saying, you can no longer use his name. Do you get that? You can no longer use his name. You can't use it no more because you don't mess up so bad. That, you know, you, you have the indest, you have the nerves to approach me and tell me that you're still going to do it. So God is saying, you know, he, uh, he swear. He swear he promised, right? You can no longer use my name. That's bad. That's bad. To me, that, that's like to the lowest of the lowest. If you don't got, if, if, if God don't, um, if you, I'm sorry, if you don't have the support of the Lord, then what do you have? If the Lord don't have your back, then what do you have? Nothing. Zero equal to zero is nothing. <laughs> Amen. That's terrible. That's terrible. Amen. Now, um, now uh, let, let, let's read down to Jeremiah and uh, 44. Jeremiah and 44 and uh, 27. It says, for surely as the sovereign, sovereign Lord lives, right? So it dropped down to, for I am watching over them for harm, not for good. So God is saying uh, to them that, oh, I'm watching over you. All right. I'm watching over you, but it's not for nothing good. It's for harm. So God, God made me feel like in my spirit that he's saying that I am, I am uh, picking a particular time to call disaster on them. Amen. So he's watching and seeking and lurking to, to, to find a particular time when he's going to call disaster on them. Amen. Because see, sometimes when, when even the enemy, when, when, when God moves, we don't, we don't know it. Well, we don't know it anyway. Amen. For the most part, unless someone speak a word to you, whatever. So, so, so God is saying that, okay, being that you just approached me and you, and you told me that, you know, with your bad self, amen. You, you told me that, that you're still going to burn these incense to the queen of heaven. You're still going to um, lift up drink offerings to her. Amen. So now I, I'm not going to put this disaster in you right there and there because you know, because you know that it's coming. Like, you know, it's going to, you know, that, that, that is too obvious right there. So God is saying in 27, for I am watching over them for harm and not good. Amen. See, he, he, he is um, waiting for the right moment when, to, when their backs are turned and, and, and to, uh, to catch them off guard to place that disaster on them. Amen. Amen. All right. So now let's go down to uh, 44 and 29. And it says, this would be the sign to you that I will punish you in this place, declares the Lord, so that you would know that my threats of harm against you will surely stand. Amen. Now, in between 27 and, and 29, he, he was he was talking again. He was telling them that he was going to put phantom and disaster on them. Amen. He was giving them the sign when the phantom hits the land. That's the sign. That uh, that you know the, that the disaster has already begun. Amen. Amen. So I don't want God to, to to starve us. Amen. I don't want God to punish us for idolizing something that is simple as a car, a watch, a ring, earrings, uh, a piece of clothing, uh, television, Facebook, uh, whatever it is. You know that you know that's very small. Let's even if it's big. Let's not get our spirits attached to the things that are not God. Amen. I mean God takes that. That that very personal and to his heart because he created us for him, not for nobody else, but for him. All right, so let's not be out of worshipers, amen. Uh, let's not be out of worship because I because I will hate to see the disaster fall upon your life and your family life, and it, and when it becomes a, a Im irreversible curse, amen. Because that's what he's saying. I mean, he was so mad these people in, in uh you know the Jews um in Egypt um in uh, chapter forty four. And Jeremiah to where, you know, he's like, you know what? You will never use my name again. Like, you can't even use my name. You can't even use my credit. Amen. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you can't even use my credit, the Lord said. Now, that, that, that's terrible, y'all. I mean, I, I'm, I'm laughing about it because it's it just, it just uh, crazy and funny how, how people, I mean, how they will try to stamp the God and, 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 and still do the things that they want to do. They don't want to obey God and know that they're going to be a consequence for it and don't care about the consequences. Amen. Amen. I mean, we must fear the Lord. To order to love the Lord, we must fear the Lord. Amen. 
And once you have the fear of God in you, then God knows that you love him. And God knows that, knows that you would never hurt him. You will never forsake him either. You know, because he he wants us to love him. He he I mean he, he wants to feel, you know, love. He I mean I mean he loves for us to be crying out to him, begging him. I mean, God loves that in intimacy between I mean you and him. Amen. I mean, he don't want you to he don't want to share you with nobody else. He don't want you to to to, uh, to show that same intimacy with another God. Amen. Because if you do, he's going to put phantom in your land. He's going to cause disaster on on your on yourself, and he's going to put place a curse, a, a irreversible curse on yourself and your family. Amen. So let's not be uh, idol idol worshipers. Amen. I mean, no, let's not idolize anything but the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope this comes come to you as a blessing um, tonight, today, or whatever you guys are viewing me from. Uh, that's my one of my favorite uh, logos. Amen. To say, because I don't know where you guys are watching me from, but I'm just blessed to have all of you um, watching me. And, um, you know, just, you know, keep the hope alive. You know, God is always there. He's always there right on time. He's always there in the, in the, uh, in, in the nick, of, nick of time. And whenever you think you're about to hang yourself, I mean, God will cut that rope off of your neck and set you free. I mean, God will show you things out of this world. I'm, I, I'm a living testimony that, you know, I, I have seen things. I have been through some things, good and bad, but God always snatched me out. Uh, in, in every bad situation, put me into a greater situation. I, you know, just trust God and, and hold on to God's unchanging hand. I mean, He's always there, even when, and I'm feeling the Holy Ghost as I speak, you guys. Um, he's always there when, even when we don't think He's there. I keep saying that for a reason, for somebody out there must be feeling like that. I mean, He's always there. When even when we don't think he's there, sometimes God is just watching us to see what we're gonna do. Amen. You know, and um, and I I have went through that season of that too, where you know God gets quiet and I'm going through a storm or I'm going through a fire and I can't hear God. I'm like God, where are you at? And God is right there. God wants to see what we're gonna do sometimes first. Amen. And then He'll come through there and He'll save us. Amen. But He loves you. I know He loves you. You wanna know why? Know why? Because He tells me He loves you. He loves you. He, he adores you. I mean, He wants the best for you and the thanks for your life. He, he wants He wants you to walk out your purpose. Um, you know your destiny. Um, He wants to He wants you to find out who you are in Christ, so you can supersede this world. You know, you can you can do some glorious things in the kingdom of God. You can be a be a world changer. Amen. Amen. Be a world changer for the kingdom of God. I love you. I love you. I love you. God bless you. God bless you. Until we meet again. Shalom.